Bring AJAX based communication between a client side and an ASP.NET Core application on the server side. Today we shall learn how to create an ebook style admin panel with links on the left side and the content appearing on the right side. This is how our project will look like. There will be a left side pane and there will be links of various reports and on the right side we will have the content pane. When a user clicks some link on the left side, the name of this report will appear here and a tick mark will appear against the report. The click link or the click on this link, it will cause an AJAX request to be sent to the server and from there this report will come along with its HTML. So this is what our objective is. Let us see how we can implement it. First of all, create an empty ASP.NET Core application in the same manner as we have explained in the previous few tutorials. Basically, we have to work with three files, the startup.cs file, the index file for the backing class and the index file for the razor markup. So let us see how we can do all these files one by one. And once this is there, the nothing else has to be done in the project. We have to simply edit, modify these three files. Let us start with the startup.cs file. These are the uh, using directives and this is the startup class. This is the configure services method. In the configure services method, add this line services dot add razor pages. This is required for adding support for razor pages. The second thing that you have to do is that come to the configure method. In the configure method, add these lines use routing and endpoints dot map razor pages. This will set the razor pages to handle the incoming requests. So this is important and this is important. This is the only configuration, the basic configuration that you will need in the startup file. Next, let us edit the index.cshtml markup file. So double click that file to open it. And here at the top, you are seeing the basic plumbing. This we have done in the past so many lectures. And in this lecture, this is the style part, the CSS for making proper spaces and paddings and all that. You can have a look at it later on. And here, this is my DIV with the ID wrapper. This will basically create a grid layout. This will be the wrapper and this will be the left pane. This will be the right pane. The DIV, this DIV will be for the left pane. And here you are having available reports. The heading that will be shown there. And these are the four links that I have hard coded there. This is the first link report of customers, receivables, inventory and all. I think a screenshot is there. This is the available reports heading. These are the four links for the reports that can be used. I have hard coded them for the ease of tutorial, but in a real application, these can be obtained from a database query itself. After that, the right side pane has a please wait span. This please wait span will appear somewhere here when a query is pending on the server. And there is a DIV for ID equal to report. This DIV is the DIV for ID equal to report. We will obtain HTML from the server and that will be set as the inner HTML of this. And this is report of this so and random garbage, whatever is there. So this part is obtained from the server and this is how the basic markup is. So let us come to the JavaScript part. When this link, this link, any link is clicked, let us see how we are going to implement it. So in this JavaScript, first of all, I have created an element for span to call it tick, tick dot style dot color red, tick dot inner HTML is equal to this tick mark. So it is this small tick that you are seeing. When a link is clicked, this tick, this tick will be moved adjacent to that link so that it appears whichever report is active. So this tick I have created as an element. This will be later on used to attach to the anchor which has been clicked recently. And then document dot query selector all. This will select all anchor tags having an attribute data hyphen rep. So precisely these four anchors, they are being hooked to the click event. This one, wait, this one. These are the uh, four anchors dot for each a loop is run on each uh, uh, around these uh, this collection and here this rep 
this will represent each anchor one by one in the for each loop and here you are setting the attribute href equal to javascript null so that the basic click action is prevented and this will be setting the href attribute to javascript null so this we set for each anchor and then we add event listener to it each anchor for click so this function will execute when each anchor is clicked so what will happen is please wait inner html will be set to please wait which one this one so this please wait will appear in small red color and then a fetch request the ajax fetch get request will be sent to a handler called rep and id will be sent for the rep dot data set dot rep now this data set dot rep means means this data hyphen rep the attribute is data hyphen rep but in javascript the value is accessed by data set dot rep so this r1 r2 r3 r4 this id this id will basically be sent as id parameter of the query or request string and this is handler equal to rep this handler will be a handler on the server side and its name should be on get this should be prefixed this is important followed by the name rep this string id this id will enter as a parameter into this id then that has to return json result i'll come to that in a moment when i'll explain the backing class okay so this is where the request goes the request goes as get catch will ensure that any network errors are handled then once the response stream is available the json obtained is obtained read from that response stream this json will be sent by the server by this call the json will be sent by the server i'll come to that in a moment this json result when that json is parsed the string is available as data and report dot inner html is set equal to data now what is this report this report is this id i could have used document dot get element by id but this is a shortcut way that you can use that id directly here so i have written report dot inner html is equal to data so whatever is sent by the server that will be inserted as inner html of that div and what we are going to do is we will send complete html so the complete html with all div all styles that can be shown in the report part and once you have got that uh, uh, ajax completed then inner html of please wait will be set to empty it will be hidden and this dot append tick now what is this first of all this is this tick this element and this keyword this represents the anchor the anchor for which click is being handled so that anchor will be appended this element as tick so it will give a feeling that this particular report is active you can use any coloring scheme etc as we see in normal websites but i have used a simple tick mark to tell that this is the active report and uh, this is here where it finishes and at the beginning uh, report dot inner html click a link on the left so when the page is loaded for the first time the links will be there but on the right side this text will appear click a link on the left you can see by running the actual project so this causes the inner html of this report to be actually set to this one when a user will click this one then a query will go to the server and from there the html will come that html reach here will be shown here and a tick mark will be shown here so this is the basic functioning of the client side so this is the, this looks big but it's not that big i have created spacing and all okay finally let us complete the index.cshtml.cs backing class this is the file that is there these are the using directives you can always come back to see in case you get some compilation errors you can compare these using directives to solve your errors this is the index model backing class and on get rep this is that function which is called from the client side this will receive the ajax ajax request the id will reach here and here what we do is await this is an artificial delay so that you can see that please wait otherwise in a real project obviously this is not there there are natural delays of queries 
then report string report is equal to get report for id this id will be sent to some database query and all that there is a function that i've created it will be a database function actually which will uh, return a ready-made html for uh, to be sent to the client side so this report is now being sent as new json result report this will go into that data and from there it will reach the inner html now about this function this is not that important but i'll explain this is some function that receives that id and we have built a strict builder a switch uh, which tells from which uh, from where that request is coming which anchor has been clicked then we append the name of the report now this all is uh, not very important i have just simulated it this is not really important it is only a simulation uh, you will have actual database queries in your projects ret dot append just a random garbage that you saw that uh, small that uh, uh, black one appeared there and then a random text between a to z is created about 200 characters they are append uh, they are put inside this p tag and the complete html so what is this html first of all there is an h1 tag the heading of the report then a small h4 just a random garbage to tell you that this is not a real project and then about 200 characters of garbage they are sent as a report so this is what it is so this is not a big deal actually if you see this is really very easy nothing of that sort so you can run the project and see for yourself that everything works as expected you can obtain the source code from me if you want and thanks for that